This is an emergency, I beg an urgent This is a serious case Hey everybody, it's your man The Bear, and today I'm gonna be doing you a breakdown of the show Sweet Tooth. I'm gonna hit you episode by episode. Granted, it's gonna be spoilers in here, so I'm warning you now. I'm gonna talk about everything from symbolism to I'm gonna say demonic entities. We're gonna talk break it down all on an alchemic level. I'm gonna give you as much information about this movie so you guys can understand what to look out for and how this movie is predicting the future. So, with that being said, stay tuned, get ready to have your socks knocked off. Let's start with episode one. In the first scene, we see everything in chaos. The world is in chaos, similar to what's going on right here, just amped up times 10. People are wearing their masks, everybody thinking this shit is just a regular pandemic, similar to, you know, what we got going on. I'm not going to say the name too much because I don't want them to X out the video. So, we'll just call it an episode. So everything is going in chaos. They bring they bring in a doctor. The doctor is going to play a significant part in this series, by the way. So really keep your eyes on him. The doctor who is the main focus at this point, who wife gets sick as well. And while all this is going on, the next scene shows a man and a baby entering into Yellowstone National Park. Now, flashing back to the doctor, we see that the first hybrid baby is introduced. Next scene that's coming up, we're gonna focus on the gentleman and the baby. As you can see how he's retreated to the woods at this point, and he's isolating himself from the rest of the world with the baby. This is very key here. Now, for those of you who don't know or who may have seen, this is the same gentleman that played in the TV series, The Last Man on Earth. They talked about pre post-apocalyptic pandemic situation and they have the same character playing this individual. So as you can see, he's isolating himself from every everything and everyone else, all the chaos out there. Now, when he first enter into the cabin, now you look through the glass window pane and there's a eight sided hexagon. Everybody knows that the eighth planet is Neptune. Neptunes represent enemies, by the way, deep emotion, sadness, etc. This is isolation. So they're playing the charts quite well here. So the guy known as Pubba is drawing a book. And the book is called The Velveteen Rabbit. Now, The Velveteen Rabbit is a, is a must read for every environmentalist. It symbolizes how deep the rabbit hole goes and how far you're willing to go to find out. That book teaches so much about self-sacrifice and, and, and just knowing that, uh, teaching faith and, and knowing that something is real and that something will come to fruition even if you can't see it now, that it will. So the Velveteen Rabbit is gonna play a major part in this story. Now, as he's into the forest and time have passed, about a year, two, three years have passed, he makes a reference to, you know how humans have blood. Then he tells the son, well, humans have blood, trees have sap. This is, this is instilling in this kid and into the viewers of this TV series that tree, that plants, trees, everything should be considered as life. All right, everybody. So now we're going to fast forward to another scene you guys are going to see. You're going to see the guy, uh, Papa, Pubba, giving the little boy a dog made out of socks. It's a stuffed animal. Now, to me, that dog symbolized his faith and what his father taught us. So let's think that's the dogma of it all. So we're going to give this person an artificial God, an artificial faith-based start point. And he's supposed to hold that true. And pay attention to, and throughout this episode, something's going to happen with that dog, with that animal dog, and it's going to challenge that kid. So then after that, we go to the kid sitting alone, isolated by himself, reading the book that his daddy wrote, The Velveteen Rabbit, with the dog sitting next to him. Keep in mind, these are all biblical doctrines that this kid is going through right now that the papa put into his head. He starts hearing a lot. He starts hearing rufflers in the trees. Then he see a baby doe. We're going to reference this to the movie Bambi because you know how when Bambi, if you, if you go into the breakdown of Bambi, the adult version of that thing, man, that talks about a loss of innocence. 
This is in the part of the movie where this kid is beginning, this hybrid, the first one, is beginning to lose his innocence and get to understand the real part of the world. This is him asking questions. All right, everybody. So before I go any further, I want to backtrack a little bit. And I want you to, uh, I want to draw your attention to the scene where the young boy, as an adolescent, he kept jumping from rock to rock. And his dad kept telling him, you know, kept coaching him on what he's going to do, preferring to each one of those rocks as an actual person or actual life lesson. Now, when he got to the third rock, he couldn't make it. He couldn't make it across. And what's the third rock, everybody? Third rock from the sun, which is Earth. Okay? That's just a hidden title, hidden meaning in it. And believe it or not, that was brought to me by Blackwoods. Now, everybody, check me out. 11 minutes and 19 seconds into the series, into the first uh, episode of the series, the it begins to rain. The boy hears, hears, the boy hears the noise. He sees the baby doe in reference to the movie Bambi, A Loss of Innocence. He takes this track. He runs, runs, runs through the forest. It's all dark and gloomy and everything. So he this is this shows us a set of a mental descent. He's descending into his reality right now. So this is that from childhood to adulthood. Now, the childhood to the next level. So he's descending. Now, he's running and 11 minutes into this in, into this episode, the father comes out, it's raining, it's storming. He picks up the baby boy and he says, "That's just mother nature, mother nature washing the world clean." And they dance in the rain. Again, this is a naturist movie and make nature's video and when i tell you who the true culprits are in this you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind but i'm not gonna reveal you this episode now 12 minutes uh, 12 minutes and 45 seconds into this episode as well he tells the boy about the bad people burning down the world taking what they want and just creating the world in the havoc again this is a naturist ideology which we'll find which i'm gonna share you know a couple episodes down why that this nature is mentality religion i'm going to just pre-warn you that right there is so prevalent in what's going on for the what's going to happen in the future all right so now we're going to flash forward to the next scene to where two years have passed it's his birthday he's nine years old blow out the cake his father gives him his first toy his first weapon which is a slingshot as his father is maintaining the farm gus he hides behind and he's starting using the slingshot, shooting at everything, being somewhat destructive. His father slips a simple reference into it. This is another teaching from his father when he says, hey, was that a mistake? Was that gift a mistake? Meaning the gift of intelligence to these new breeds that's going to inherit the world. If I give them a weapon, will they start using the weapons like the humans did prior? Destroying, taking control, taking advantage letting their anger get the best of them or their superiority that is a simple message that need to be checked when it comes down to this movie now everybody there shows a scene when the character gus steps outside of the line the line keep in mind that's a barrier for mind his mentality keep in mind they already descended into isolation chaos this is the kid waking back up learning a lesson growing now he steps out his father catches him pull him back they sit up there they have an argument they hear a noise and somebody calling and the father immediately go grabs a stick this guy has a gun goes out there to confront this guy who is going to be who will have a name as the series progress but the father is telling him haul ass go away ain't nobody here but him and as the guy as the father think he scares the guy off he noticed there's pink ribbons on the gate they've been tagged they've been tagged by everything by everybody so they are considered to be a cancer. Pink, as we know, is cancer awareness, okay? Now, hit, let me hit you with this one. The next scene, the father is shown taking a vial out of a, out of a case that nobody knew he had. And inside that vial, the serum inside of there is pink, okay? That represents, there's a canceric, there, there's a cancerous serum in that vial. Now, he ties it to a stick, making it a spear, a weapon to inject somebody or himself. So guess what? To me, that's saying that these people are willing to utilize cancer as a weapon to destroy anything who's threatened their way of life. 
Think about it. This man is living in the woods with his son, trying to protect all this right here, trying to protect these hybrids, or trying to protect all his nature. And here goes this last man, this human, coming to interrupt what they have going on, this bliss. So yeah, I'm gonna give you cancer. I'm gonna kill your ass off hell. Even if I catch the disease in the process, now we get back to the Velveteen Rabbit. Sacrifices are needed to be made in order to achieve your goal for the greater good. Now, sidebar, do your research people. The first color that the planet produced on a, chemic, uh, on a chemical basis was the color pink. It came from a certain type of rock, volcanic rock, and do your research. I'm not gonna, I mean, don't quote me on the actual where it goes because I don't have the information. This is something I can't do with my studies and it just popped in my head to relate to this. But pink, they say it's the first color, the same color inside that vial, the same color as that ribbon, it's the first color to be produced on the planet as a chemical, as is an alchemic property. Pink, cancer, they see us as cancer and they're willing to give us cancer to kill us so that they can inherit the earth. So I know you guys are asking at this point, Baron, who is they? Who is they? If I tell you who they is right now, you're probably gonna look at the series totally different and be like, man, shit, I know everything. But I wanna hold off. I guess I'm just baiting you guys up to get a little bit done. I reveal who are they in the next uh, breakdown of episode two. Then from there on, you guys will have a full understanding. Now, the father has just gone off to attack this man to infect him with cancer. He fucks up and give himself cancer or he did it on purpose just to make that person sick. Because keep in mind, it's been 10 years since the, well, seven years since the pandemic happened and the disease has slowed down. People are living in isolated pockets, groups, etc., etc. Father comes back after he done infected the last man. So now that person he infected needs to take that particular uh, infection back to his camp and let's continue making the people sick. That's, that's what the father was symbolizing right here. That's what this show is symbolizing right here. Now the father comes back, he's expired. He done perished because of he got the sickness as well. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, it happened. Now the boy has to go through a one whole year by himself. That symbolized to how in so many Eskimo Native American tribes where somebody has to spend an X amount of time in isolation by themselves to learn how to live with the land, fend for themselves. But when the boy try to use technology here, scissors, drills, anything on a technical level, it fails, it collapses, it's no good, it's obsolete. That's a message they're trying to send that your technology is not going to be able to conquer you know this planet these trees you're not going to be able to survive you know what's going on well when mother earth come back and take your ass up and through there so now i want to turn your attention as a boy living by himself he gets frustrated and he begins to lash out burning burning his make-believe friend the weasel then he burns the one gift his father gave him which was the stuffed animal named dog dog is always going to be a reference to g-o-d backwards god which is religious doctrine dogma. So he tries to burn everything his father taught him to burn away all his father, uh, everything his father taught him because he pissed off. He's angry. Father, not here. You left me alone to fend for myself. He doesn't recognize the value in nature, so to say. Now, he decides to save the dog, meaning like, I can't give up on what my father taught me, what was taught to me, my teachings. I understand this. I've been doing this for a long time. This is me against the world. This is the, this is the message that the father wanted to betray him. It's just nature against the rest of the world. If you're not gonna live in harmony with nature, you are shit to the naturist. Now fast forward a little bit from that time when he realized that you know his dogma, his teaching is supposed to be set in stone and now that's taking control over him. Fast forward a little bit, Gus finds what his father's kept hidden under the tree, the, box, the lock box with all the stuff, money, pictures of his mother, etc. Now he has a mission, he's on a mission. He decides to leave this, this plantation and uh, leave this cabin, this isolation, this harmony in the woods to go search for his mother. This recognize the earning, Mother Earth, where you come from. This shows where we come from, where we're going. We need our mother, Mother Earth. It, it's this, this is the antagonist of the whole damn movie is I want my mother. Mother is always going to symbolize Mother Earth in this show. Now, as he loads up his sled 
he passes by and he gets on his he passes by some flowers some colorful flowers red and yellow flowers the only fluorescent colored flowers in the whole goddamn forest that they're living in it's symbol and, it, and they're just grown because it just was a hard winter they just grown this symbolizes growth rebirth renewal this is another mother earth style energy another saying from the or the the earth society i should say the nature society as he goes on his track he can't even carry the whole goddamn thing with him all the other stuff he thought he needed it goes by the wayside because he loses the carriage with all the stuff that he had in it so it's just him alone with mother nature again this is when he's about to meet the two people who are trying to kill him murder him or do whatever nefarious thing they want to do with him because he's a hybrid so they lure him in with sugar candy Keep in mind, candy is technology. If you got in nature, you have raisins, fruit, you have honey, beets. These are reference to nature's candy. But he has an artifact. He is tempted with an artificial candy, which puts him in danger. This is the nature society telling you guys that, hey, don't be tempted by the ways of man. They just going to tempt you and it's going to put you in danger. Do not go back to that lifestyle. We're going to give you something to live in harmony with all these preservatives, sugars, and everything else, fake sugars, even though you like them, it's going to be bad for you. It's going to get you in trouble. That's the message. Notice the boy was drinking tree sap the whole goddamn time. That's a natural syrup. The father was making syrup. That's a natural sugar. Tree sap, maple syrup, these are harmonious things that don't affect the body so much. But when you get into these, these are what you call a confectionist sugars and all that stuff, that's the... Society saying this shit is poison to the body. Get away from it. That's a message. I tell them to their nature is stop drinking these preservatives and sugars. All right, everybody. Now we're going to come to my favorite freaking part of this, of, this, of this episode, right? Now enter big man, big strong black brother. And he even got a cool name. I like his name. So let's break down to the symbology, the, symb the symbolism behind this big brother coming into the thing. So again, I'm, when I tell you who the co who the true villain culprit is in this series, you're gonna be like, oh shit, this you're gonna see. So here comes this big giant black guy, melanated man, I use that word. Notice something in nature, which was on all of our canned goods growing up. Ho, 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 green giant another reference to nature vegetation and then the darkness in his skin melanated man we know how to survive off the earth we know how to live with the earth better than any other race there is it's just that we got westernized and now we're sitting up here we need the confession sugar we need the nice cars and clothes and shit we value money but this guy didn't value any of that shit notice throughout this whole movie nobody eats meat Nobody eats meat anymore. Everything is plant-based. Veganism, vegetarianism. I don't know how to go nowadays. Hell. But yeah, the green giant appears and he saves the kid. The green giant name is Jeb. And that's, and I'm going to do a character breakdown of Jeb too. And you're going to understand what Jeb represents in the bigger scheme of things. Now, after Jeb saved the boy, he goes back to the boy's cabin looking for him. Not to hurt him just to see what the hell going on because he's shocked he never seen a talking hybrid kid before meaning that this is a transition this is a wake-up call for the world jail represent a wake-up call i know jail serves as a protector of mother earth of nature black men you are the protectors of mother earth and nature if we can get our ass back to where we need to be that's melanated talk i don't care if you're indian as long as you got that deep dark melanation in your skin or one percent of it you are called to be the protector of Mother Earth. It's your mother, protector. Hmm. Keep that Mother Earth thing in mind. Now, Jeb comes and he fixes certain things. He, keep, he, he teaches the boy how to sustain himself, even give him gardening tips. Why would Jeb know this? You was a professional athlete before the world turned. Why would you know how to do all this? This is something that he has inherited learned. He has been transformed, changed. He saw the new. He stopped hunting these hybrids and he became one with nature and peace and he just travels the countryside in the wilderness living off the earth 
you know, the best way he can. All right, everybody. Now, Jeb has just fixed what he needed to fix for the boy. The boy is hiding on top of the roof, and he's using that slingshot his father gave him. Keep in mind, his father never told him that that slingshot was a weapon. He gave it to him as a toy. But this boy has developed some sense in his mind that this thing could be used as a weapon to ward off enemies. So he started pelting Jeb with stone, telling him to get off his property. Get He's defending himself. So the father has instinctively instilled in this boy, you need to protect your peace of mind, your nature. You need to protect the forest, the woods, and everything. Even though Jeb is trying to assist him, he still sees Jeb as a threat because he doesn't know the reality of what Jeb stands for or he don't know if he can trust him. That's how it is. You go into the woods, you meet an animal, they beat your ass or they kill you or they run from you until they learn to trust you. Now they walk up to you and them they eat out your hand. Part is the cutest part in this scene, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna just say it. It's the cutest part in this scene. The little kid, he when Jeb leaves, he realized that, hey, you know, I'm gonna be here by my lawn. This technology ain't gonna last so long. I need to go and explore the world, see what's out there. So he runs after Jed, he hustles, he flips, he do some parkour shit. He runs after Jeb and he yells to the big man, hey big man, take me. So from here on out, Jeb is gonna be called the Green Giant from here on out because of the green melanated in his skin, that carbon. So we're gonna call him the Green Giant. So he yells to him, hey, take me. Jeb is reluctant to say no, you slow me down, don't want you. Still saying he gotta protect the world and make shit right for what he did in the past, the awakening and that starts the boys' venture with Jeb, and that will be my breakdown for the first uh, for the first series of uh, Sweet Tooth. Next time I get into what the name means and all that stuff there. All right, everybody, I'm the Baron, telling you guys to trust the you and universe. Because at the end of the day, y'all you got, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a great. One.